Full Frame's close-up this week is focused on an artist who travels the world. He's doing what most of us would never dream of. He scours trash piles for the perfect item that can be incorporated into his next art piece. Brian Petro's artwork comes in many different forms. One thing that has always stuck with him are timeless found objects. He uses his mixed media art to give life to items that would otherwise be forgotten or simply thrown away. To Brian, these items symbolize hard work, ingenuity, and untold stories that can now live again in a different form through his art. There's so many items that so much time and, and, and thought and intention and labor to create these functional, beautiful items. Uh, they need to be revered in some way. I'm constantly looking for things that are on the street, in the alleys, in dumpsters, blowing down the street. Rio, Rome, London, um, New York City, wherever I go, there's, there's so many things in alleyways that are just, that are lying there and waiting to be used and repurposed. I get a lot of flack sometimes because of friends borrow my jackets, especially in the wintertime, and they put their hands in their pockets and they, they're like, what is this? And they pull out like broken car reflectors and spark plugs and shards of metal <laughs> and they're like what, what are these for i'm like just hold on you'll see there's so many uh, items that even like functional items that um, are designed so well mechanically for purpose but uh visually as well I mean, just think of a small simple spark plug there's the metal core, the, uh, the, the curved tip on the bottom, the metal, the, uh, the, the, the grooves, and there's a ceramic portion too. You have metal and ceramic that, that allows like, energy to flow through and have this extreme function. And um, people use them, they just cast them away. They're heavy, they're hardy, they're, 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 they're purposeful. I think they're beautiful. I do photography, painting, sculpture, drawing, mixed media work, and uh, I've been doing it now professionally for 17 years. Some things are just made because they have to be made and I have no reason why. I'm just like, this needs to go with this, this way, with this paint, these nails, this wood. I don't know why, I just feel like I have to make that today and I just let it happen, I'll figure it out later. My father was um, quite an avid smoker for 30 years, and that was actually his ultimate demise. You get a, a Lucky Strike package in your hand, it's like the perfect size, perfectly designed for desire, for people to want to use it. The olive green of it, the red on that package as well, it's a perfectly designed package. And when I see that, um, I have so many things that come up from the loss of my father, through uh, um, health and governmental issues too. I mean, we have a product here that's uh, okayed by the, uh, by the US government. Um, it's okay to use it, it'll kill you. But as long as they get their taxes, go ahead and keep on using it. So there's a lot of issues that come up with me about that. And I use that image as in homage to my father, but also as commentary of like what is right and wrong with uh, um, trying to help people with uh, um, a healthy life. I was doing a lot of photographic work for a period of time, and that's more technical, there's more film, there's chemical, there's processing, there's all this kind of tight constraints on a lot of that aspect. And I was thinking, like, what can I do for a break that would break 
very much from that, be dichotomous to all that control and be something much more simple and much more free flowing. I just started doing uh, free flowing, emotive kind of pieces with smooth curvy lines, uh, all freehand. Many people when they see the works think that I use a string or a protractor or something like that, but they're all just free flowing like line linear movements with my hand. The thing about Brian is that he does do a lot of different sort of art and I've been to his studio and was like, oh wow, I had no idea. We discovered these because he came, walked into the gallery one day with, um, I think, a portfolio of these, and I really like them. Uh, he is a very expressive person, and um, his paintings reflect that. They are, they're expressive, they're huge brushstrokes, but they're also well thought out, and he is controlling some very difficult materials. When I was in uh, New York, when I moved to Manhattan for a period of time, um, I was just trying to revisit some things I did in the past, different styles of work. And uh, I was going through some dumpsters um, in the Lower East Side, and um, I was behind a grocery store, and I was going through this dumpster, and I found these really great signs, the storefront signs that they put up every week that have vegetables and the pricings and everything. And it's kind of, it's kind of retro in, in, in the form, uh, formulation of the design and everything. And it's kind of cheap inks and they fade really easily and the, the graphics aren't very uh, high resolution and everything. So I started pulling out these signs and everything. I took them back to my studio and started tearing them up and trying to figure out what to do with them. And I went back to the store the following week. I went back to the dumpster and I, saw, I found more signs. And all of a sudden the manager came out and he's like, Dude, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm, um, I'm an artist. I'm just getting materials to make some artwork. And he's like, man, you don't have to go through our dumpsters. No, I'll, I'll set the signs aside for you every week. You can come by and pick them up. So I take these signs, I, I tear them up, I destroy them, I, I apply them to, uh, to wooden panels and wooden boards with polyurethane. And I overpaint with graphite and an oil paint. And again, this is another thing, taking elements that I think are beautiful that would be cast into landfills that can be used, revisited, and held onto for, for posterity as almost a, a trip to a museum of, of signage and of um, commercialization of food products. In a way, by using found objects as, as I like to do, I'm reinventing and showing those items again and bringing them liberty and giving them uh, value and sharing those uh, so they're not lost to antiquity. There's so many stories behind why and how they were created and um, I think that needs to be held on to instead of being lost um, forever. That's it for this week. Join the conversation with us on social media. We are CCTV America on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. All of tonight's interviews can be found online at cctv-america.com. And let us know what you'd like us to take full frame next. Email us at fullframe at cctv-america.com. Until then, I'm Mike Walter in Los Angeles. We'll see you next time.